Here we provide a new perspective, a perspective solution, a lake farming program. The nations bordering Africa's Great Lake Victoria are threatened by massive water hyacinth invasions. From the current perspective, the situation of Lake Victoria is unstoppable. Technology by Ocean Tech Corporation can supply Lake Victoria Environmental Company with the means to generate the energy needed by the Lake Nation. This is done by the harvesting of freeze-dried hyacinth biomass. We must consider the existing problem as a means to the solution. Here we provide a new perspective, a new solution, a lake farming program, one that is both economically and environmentally sustainable. We must consider the existing problem as a means to the solution. Our guiding principle? Turn the problem into its own solution. We couple environmental sustainability with economic sustainability, taking the pollutant material and turning it into a profitable commodity. This is the philosophy of Lake Farming. To develop and use a technology that's environmentally neutral and a methodology that couples, wherever possible, the use of something that is unwanted, a pollutant or waste product, to create something that benefits the society. Here we turn the invasive hyacinth mass, the problem, into an ongoing renewable source of energy, the active solution. To provide tens of thousands of jobs and business opportunities along with the energy for electrical power plants, waste and water treatment facilities, infrastructure, and long-term sustainable economic growth. Here, the pollutant biomass, this invasive plant, serves to provide a new and ongoing source of renewable energy. The maximum harvesting rates occur when the lake is healthy. It is only when the aquatic chemistry is in balance when the ecosystems are in equilibrium, when the health of the lake is optimal, that the harvesting itself can be maximized. This is done by the harvesting of freeze-dried hyacinth biomass for generation of fuels, biofuels, biogases. The flowering parts of the water hyacinths are rich in oils, which are excellent feedstocks for green gasoline, jet fuel, and high-energy capacity biodiesel hydrocarbons for plastic and chemical manufacturing, aromatic oils for use in perfume production. From the bulk biomass, the hyacinth petioles and green leafy matter, production of fine powder for injector furnaces and kilns, granules of various gauge for heavy equipment and combustion engines, larger chunks of compressed matter for biomass briquettes and fireplace logs for direct combustion, and as the feedstock for clean, natural gases, methane and butane. Clean, healthy energy at low prices. Price below wood to decrease deforestation. The lake nations of Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda will be able to export surplus energy. Building infrastructure, building new power plants and waste treatment facilities, new industries, sustainable long-term economic development and growth, while still having the capacity to sell surplus energy on the world market. 
older approaches and current approaches all make one mistake. They leave the lake out of the equation. The aquatic chemistry and ecosystem dynamics, the biogeochemical cycling of nutrients, the interactions between aquatic species and the complex feedbacks between these processes are all an integral part of the remediation and restoration of Lake Victoria. Start freezing, you can clearly identify the frozen oil and composite. Five dash twenty, five dash thirty, ten dash thirty, and twenty dash fifty weight motor blend. Ten dash thirty weight synthetic racing oil, ninety weight gear oil vacuum pump oil, and hydraulic fluids. Light diesel, number five and number seven fuel oils. Petroleum, benzene, toluene, and petroleum ether. Vegetable oils, soybean, flax, and corn oil. Mineral oils, lipids, cholesterol, acetylcholine, and lipidic pharmaceuticals. Castor and cod fish oils, and common municipal fluids and solvents all readily remediated via crime.
The nations bordering Africa's Great Lake Victoria are threatened by massive water hyacinth invasions. From the current perspective, the situation of Lake Victoria is unstoppable. Dense blooms cover large portions of the lake, over 250 metric tons on average per acre. Ongoing losses in food, revenue, resources, jobs and earnings, economic growth. An observed decline in the health of the lake and the local communities that rely upon it. Here we provide a new perspective, a new solution, a lake farming program. One that is both economically and environmentally sustainable. One that has the capacity to induce rapid economic growth while restoring the health of Lake Victoria and its diverse ecosystems. This is done by the harvesting of freeze-dried hyacinth biomass for generation of fuels, biofuels, biogases. The flowering parts of the water hyacinths are rich in oils, which are excellent feedstocks for green gasoline, jet fuel, and high-energy capacity biodiesel, hydrocarbons for plastic and chemical manufacturing, aromatic oils for use in perfume production. From the bulk biomass, the hyacinth petioles and green leafy matter, production of fine powder for injector furnaces and kilns, granules of various gauge for heavy equipment and combustion engines. Coarser granules and chunks can also be used for fermentation to produce alcohols, ethanol, butanol, and as the feedstock for clean, natural gases, methane and butane. Clean, healthy energy at low prices. Price below wood to decrease deforestation. Larger chunks of compressed matter for biomass briquettes and fireplace logs for direct combustion. Price to decrease reliance on wood-based fuels for cooking and spacing, thus reducing deforestation and health problems related to soot, ash, carcinogens, and release of harmful volatiles. In the combustibility test done in our lab, calorimetry measurements show that the energy yield is high, sufficient for production of electrical energy, fueling electrical power plants, water and waste treatment facilities, and large-scale generation of clean, healthy, purified natural gases. Older approaches and current approaches all make one mistake. They leave the lake out of the equation. The aquatic chemistry and ecosystem dynamics, the biogeochemical cycling of nutrients, the interactions between aquatic species and the complex feedbacks between these processes are all an integral part of the remediation and restoration of Lake Victoria. The answer is not in poisonous chemicals, herbicides or pesticides. The answer is not in dredging, mowing or chopping and hauling away the biomass to some landfill or dump site. The answer is not in this burn and destroy approach, the methodology of taking the biomass and chopping it up, then letting it sink to the bottom of the lake to rot, to further deplete the lake's oxygen and accelerate the process of eutrophication, to suffocate the fish, to cover their breeding areas or hatching sites, to further decimate their populations. The answer is not to introduce foreign insects, weevils, moths, or parasitic larvae that will hopefully not move on to some more desirable or valuable food crop. Our technology is environmentally neutral. Its active agent consists only of the air from the sky above. Moreover, the byproducts of our air liquefaction process provide additional markets themselves. Liquid oxygen for fish farming, industry and medical applications. Liquid argon and nitrogen for industrial use and scientific research. There is a greater energy yield per acre from generation of natural gases than from the direct combustion of the biomass itself. We must consider the existing problem as a means to the solution. Our guiding principle? Turn the problem into its own solution. We couple environmental sustainability with economic sustainability. Taking the pollutant material and turning it into a profitable commodity. This is the philosophy of Lake Farm. To develop and use a technology that's environmentally neutral and a methodology that couples wherever possible the use of something that is unwanted, a pollutant, a waste product, to create something that benefits the society. 
Here we turn the invasive hyacinth mass, the problem, into an ongoing renewable source of energy, the active solution, to provide tens of thousands of jobs and business opportunities along with the energy for electrical power plants, waste and water treatment facilities, infrastructure, and long-term sustainable economic growth. Again, one can obtain a higher yield of energy per acre in natural gas than from the combustion of the biomass itself. Generating biofuels and biogases, clean natural gas, alcohol by fermentation, with the resulting carbon dioxide, recycled in algal chambers for additional biomass production, using genetically engineered algae, high in energy producing oils as feedstocks for hydrocarbon and chemical manufacturing, advanced high energy capacity fuels, green gasoline, biodiesel, jet fuel, flash evaporation to hydrogen and syngas, pressed biomass fuels as a substitute for wood, price to curtail its reliance on wood to lower deforestation. It's only when the lake is at its optimal health that maximal harvesting can be performed. This is what the United Nations Broderbund Commission envisioned as economic and environmental sustainability. Here the pollutant biomass, this invasive plant, serves to provide a new and ongoing source of renewable energy. Our biomass harvesting vessels are engineered so that the biomass is freeze-dried and captured, sequestered, removed right at the lake's surface before any phytochemicals can leach out, before any of the matter can sink into the lake, into the water column. Simultaneously, mosquitoes, malaria-carrying mosquitoes, and other pest species are removed, frozen in the process. Our air liquefaction and separation plants will provide opportunities for large incomes or revenues from the sale of excess liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen, and liquid argon. Hyacinth fibers can be sold locally by entrepreneurs for weaving, for wickerware, for creative arts, as well as for use in the production of building materials, providing additional jobs at many levels. The optimal harvesting is coincident with the optimal health of the lake. It is only when the aquatic chemistry is in balance, when the ecosystems are in equilibrium, when the health of the lake is optimal, that the harvesting itself can be maximized. Moreover, the lake project, at all stages, is guided by environmental monitoring. The maximum harvesting rates occur when the lake is healthy. It must be harvested on a regular schedule, on regular basis, so that the lake remains free for sunlight to propagate into the water column. The optimal harvesting is coincident with the optimal health of the lake. It is only daily ongoing monitoring of the aquatic chemistry by spectral and chemical analysis will ensure that indigenous submerged plants are performing photosynthetically to re-oxygenate the lake and return dissolved oxygen levels to equilibrium. Hyacinths will be remediated before they can become sufficiently dense to block sunlight from propagating into the lake. We should see a return to normalcy, a return to equilibrium, to sustainability. Combustibility studies and calorimetry measurements of samples for energy produced per unit mass shows that yields will be sufficient for strong industrial growth in the near term. We can also expect in the near term to see the dissolved oxygen levels begin to rise, eutrophication begin to recede as the highest plants are harvested and removed. Once the lake farming project is scaled up to a full lake-wide program, the region can easily go from a net energy poor region to one that is energy rich, based on the sustainability and the fact that we are producing a renewable energy product. Technology by Ocean Tech Corporation can supply Lake Victoria Environmental Company with the means to generate the energy needed by the Lake Nations. The Lake Nations of Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda will be able to export surplus energy. Building infrastructure, building new power plants and waste treatment facilities, new industries, sustainable long-term economic development and growth, while still having the capacity to sell surplus energy on the world market. The success of the program will only be possible 
because of Lake Victoria Environmental Company's capability, their strong motivation to provide benefits to local communities and their demonstrated expertise. To see a return of Lake Victoria to its natural glory, Lake Victoria Environmental Company is Ocean Tech Corporation's sole designated licensee. Only Lake Victoria Environmental Company is capable of successfully running an economic development program for this region of the world.